the path of knowledge is the way to jannah the path of knowledge is the way to jannah jannah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mursalin amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel Welcome back to another episode on this silsila for the path of knowledge Where as you know we discuss different aspects of knowledge itself and for those who are joining us for the first time, we welcome you as well. And please do stay with us with good intentions as a, our Shaykh at Tariqat, Amir Ahl Sunnat, Damud Barakatuhul Aliyah, who is the founder of Dawud Islami, always encourages us to make good intentions. So you too make the good intention. I too will, inshallah, azawajal, that I will deliver this episode, whatever content there is, for the pleasure of Allah, azawajal, for the pleasure of Rasulullah, sallallahu ta'ala, alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And inshallah azawajal, I will try to teach others, spread the information along as well to your spouse, to your parents, to your children, to your siblings and other Muslims, Muslim friends, Muslims in your society. In this way, whatever other good intentions you can think of, make it now to gain maximum rewards. Because remember, it is mentioned in the summary of hadith that the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said, Niyatul mu'mini khayrun min amalihi. The intention of a believer is better than his action, subhanallah. And the more good intentions you make, the more reward you get. And if a person is doing a good deed with no good intention, there's no reward for that. Keep these principles in mind. Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, indeed there are countless of benefits and blessings for those fortunate Muslims who recite a lot of durud e pak a lot of salawat and salutations upon our beloved master Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. It is mentioned in a very beautiful hadith, the summary of which is Decorate your gatherings by reciting durood or salat upon me because this durood, this salat will be noor for you on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, Indeed, knowledge is such a thing that if a person has it, he can be saved from many difficulties, from many harms. And if a person does not, then he will fall into all the, the traps and the tricks, especially of shaitan, the cursed one. person who has knowledge about fire, he will safeguard himself. He won't go near that. He will not put him, himself into the danger in harm's way. But if a person imagine, doesn't know what is fire, the qualities of fire, the danger of fire, that person will destroy himself. Likewise, knowledge, and in particular knowledge of deen, is essential for every Muslim. In fact, it is found that it is compulsory for every Muslim, male and female, to know enough knowledge about deen, the different aspects, whether it's salah, whether it's zakat, whether it is fasting the blessed month of Ramadan, going for hajj, etc. These things, it is essential to know enough that we refrain. We know what is halal, what is the haram, what is the do's, what is the don'ts. So we don't do what is not supposed to be done, and we do what we are ordered to do by Allah and the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa When it comes to seeking knowledge of deen, there are some times or timings during the day that are more suitable than others. It is said that وَقْتُ تَعَلُّمِ مِنَ الْمَهْدِ إِلَى اللَّحْدِ The time for learning the deen is from the cradle to the grave. Subhanallah. Remember, you are never ever too old to learn the deen, Islam, that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent with his prophets, with the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi Never ever think that I am so old, what can I learn, how can I benefit? This is one of the whispers of shaitan, of the cursed devil. That he will make you think that you, you did madrasa, you went to school, you went to madrasa when you were young, there's no need now. The trick and trap of shaitan. Many have fallen prey to this. So remove all these wasawis. Alhamdulillah, Dawood Islam is working day and night around the world, globally, to provide different facilities in the form of Madrasatul Madinah for adults, for children, where you can learn, no matter what your age is. 
So do join these, even online as well, and all for free, for no fee at all, subhanAllah. So seeking knowledge from the cradle to the grave, this is the times of seeking knowledge, of deen in particular. The best time to acquire knowledge is during the early days of one's youth. And in terms of our, at the time of Sahari, and between Maghrib and Isha, these two timings are where the most effect is received. If we are studying al Madin at these times, at the time of Sahari, and between Maghrib and Isha. Since this is a discussion in regard to excellence, a student should always be busy in acquiring knowledge. If a student is tired and maybe he gets bored of one subject or he becomes tired, his mind be mentally he becomes fatigued and tired of one subject, then pick up a book of another subject or start change the topic, change the subject and do something else. But continue learning so your mind becomes fresh. Sometimes for few maybe minutes or hours we are studying a particular topic or subject and the mind becomes weary of it. So change, change the topic, change the subject. In particular, when you are with your, with your fellow students and you are going over the work. This will keep you fresh as well. One of the techniques, inshallah Azza wa Jal. The great Sahabi, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, he had stated, or rather it was stated about him, that when he would get tired, fatigued, mentally, physically, we get tired. So when he got tired of learning ilmul kalam, he would ask for a collection of poetry, ash'ar, couplets, and he would read that. Subhanallah. The great Imam Muhammad rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, he would always remain awake at night. He would have many types of books with him. Different topics, different subjects he would have with him. When he became weary and tired of learning one subject or going over one subject, then he would begin to learn another one. Subhanallah. We must actually follow in their blessed footsteps. And why we should follow in their blessed footsteps? Because everybody needs somebody to follow. We all have teachers, sometimes good teachers who teach us good things. And then obviously there's bad influences, bad friends, bad company that is there. And then we learn bad things from them, bad habits, sometimes evil things. Those so-called friends who are there to mislead us, they sometimes don't know they're misleading us, but they take us towards those paths or those entertainments behind which lies punishment and pain. Our real friends are those who call us and take us towards the masjid, to take us towards obedience of Allah and His Rasul So follow in the blessed footsteps of the pious ones. So as we mentioned that Imam Muhammad Ta'ala he would have so many books in front of him. When he got tired of one subject, he would take a book of another subject and he would learn this. Do the same thing, it will benefit us inshallah Azawajal. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also, regarding Imam Muhammad rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, he would have some water near him. Do you know why? Because whenever drowsiness would overcome him, he would take some water and splash it onto his face and his eyes as well. Why? He would say drowsiness is because of heat, is due to heat. Therefore, one should get rid of this drowsiness, this heat, with cold water. Subhanallah. Another very beautiful and simple technique. We don't need money for this. Have a little water there. If you get tired, then remove that with the coolness of water, with cold water, inshallah azza wa jal. So, regarding the timings, as we mentioned earlier, the best timings are at the time of Sahari and the time between Maghrib and Isha. If you do learn your al Madin, if you want to fully absorb or the maximum benefit you want to gain, then these are the best timings. And remember, when we are studying al Madin, we should never ever be unfriendly with people, with our fellow students as well. Never display bad characteristics, bad akhlaq. This will negatively affect, negatively affect your studies and your personality itself. A student must always be extremely friendly and instead of being jealous of others, advise them with sincerity because jealousy can never ever benefit anybody. It is mentioned that hasad, jealousy actually eats up good deeds how the fire eats up wood. Imagine. Now if a person has jealousy, this is one of the 
internal bimaris, one of the internal spiritual diseases that people suffer with. Allah will remove this from our hearts, inshallah Azza wa Jal. Shaykh al-Islam Burhanuddin rahmatullahi alayhi has mentioned, often the son of an alim is also an alim because a scholar, an alim also desires that his students become scholars and due to the blessings that come because of his love, his shafqat, his kindness, his selflessness that he has for others, his son will also follow in the same path and become an alim one day. It is mentioned that Sadr al-Ajil, Burhan al-A'imma rahmatullahi alayhi, he had taken special periods in the afternoon to teach his two sons. He would teach them in the afternoon specific times after he finished teach his other students. Then he would teach his sons in the afternoon. Now one day his two sons, they came and they complained that our dear father, we feel very tired quickly in the afternoon. So please teach us before teaching your other students. Shaykh Burhan al-A'imma rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi had said, he replied, it is important to teach the students who are travelers and they come from very far places, from different places they come of the world to learn from me. So I should teach them first, subhanallah. So due to the kindness that these two sons of the Shaykh, they show to the other students, Intellectually, they became more intellectual than the other jurists of their time, subhanAllah. Their patience was there. Because of their patience and their understanding, Allah granted them more intellectual capacity, subhanAllah. Remember, a student should always stay away from disputes. Very important. If we get into groupings with other students, our mind becomes distracted. We start disputing, start arguing with others. And this consumes, it wastes a lot of our time actually. A wise person has said, Al Muhsinu Sayyudza bi ihsanihi wal musi'u satakfihi masawihi. The one who does good will be rewarded for his good one day, while the wrongdoer's bad deeds are enough for him. Ruknul al Islam Muhammad bin Abi Bakr said that Sultan al Sharia Yusuf Haddani he has stated, لا تجزي إنسانا على سوء فعله سيكفيه ما فيه وما هو فاعله. You should not punish a human being due to his bad deeds, but what state he is in and what he does is enough for him. Always remain busy with your work, with your studies, and refrain from attempt, attempting to defeat your enemies. Refrain from this and busy yourself in your own work, in your own studies. When you concentrate on your work and you gain an elevated status, then your enemy will automatically be defeated. But if you waste your time in trying to defeat your enemy, a lot of time is gone. A lot of your precious time is gone. If you involve yourself only in accomplishing your task at hand, your work, inshallah azawajal, this will lead to the defeat automatically of your enemy. Also avoid creating enmity over silly issues, inferior issues. Otherwise it will disgrace you and will also waste more precious time. You as a student must have sabr, must have patience and patiently persevere. Keep moving forward. Have bardash, the ability to tolerate, forbearing, especially when facing ignorant people. Sayyiduna Nabi Isa, Ruhullah ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu salam, he has said, Ihtamilu minas safihi wahidatan kay tarbahu ashran. Bear the words of the silly people once so that you can be rewarded tenfold. Subhanallah. Does this not remind you of our Baba Jan, Amir al Sunnah, Tamil Barakatul Aliyah, who is the founder of Dawud Islami, that how many people? They would say bad things against him or they would do physically, physically, mentally, psychologically, they would hurl a lot of negativities towards him. Say bad things, do bad things. And Bapa John always advises us, if anybody does this to us, if you are a Mubalnih of Dawud Islami, if somebody does this, puts obstacles in your way, what must be your reply? Your reply must be to increase the Madani work. Your reply must be to be good to those people. Call them towards Nikki Kidawit, inv invitation towards goodness.
and increase upon the network. This must be our reply. This is what Baba John has advised us because he does the same. The more people throw negatives towards his way or try to put obstacles, the more he increases his madani activities and work. Subhanallah. Also, it is mentioned our master, Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, once he was sitting with his murids and somebody had sent a letter with a lot of bad language, vulgarism in there against Allah Hazrat. And his murids, his followers, his lovers, they had said, no, we want to take revenge on this person. We want to find him and we want to sort this person out. Al Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali has said, that open the drawer and you will see a whole bunch of letters of praise towards me. First, go and give each one of these people who praise me, tuhfa and gifts before you sort of that person there. Meaning that these people are going to be there. People who love you, who respect you, who praise you and people who don't. These people will be there. We must just bear with this, with good intentions, continue obeying Allah Azza wa Jal and the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Sallam. And inshallah Azza wa Jal, these people will fade off automatically. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam. Furthermore, as a student of deen, remember, do not have suspicion in regard to Muslims. This is very dangerous. It is suspicion which creates enmity, malice, and this is forbidden in Islam. The beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Sallam has stated this is recorded in Al Mu'ajam Al Kabir. It is said that, Dhunnu bil mu'mineen khayran. Think good of the believers. Subhanallah. So if you see something that may look bad even, rather, as a Muslim, cover the fault of your fellow Muslim. Don't spread the news about it. And go to that Muslim in private and discuss this with them. That my brother, this is what I've seen you doing. This is what I heard you doing. Please refrain from this. And this, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, you will be rewarded for this, in fact. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Suspicion in regard to a Muslim occurs because of negative thoughts and bad intentions. Abu Tayyib has mentioned that when a person's actions are bad and evil, his thoughts become polluted until he begins to accept the delusions in his mind. When a person's actions are bad, the thoughts become bad. This person who has negative thoughts of others, he holds enmity with his loved ones upon the comments of his enemies. And he even spends his days in the dark nights of doubts. It is mentioned, Shaykh Abu Al-Fath Busti Rahmatullah has stated, A wise man is not free from the harm of an ignorant person. An ignorant man targets him oppressively with a lot of transgression. And a good person should choose peace upon the fight of his enemy. And he should maintain silence. The great Imam Shafi'i Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali had mentioned that if I were against other ulama in a debate, in a healthy debate, I would win because of my intelligence, my wisdom that Allah Azawajal has given me. But if you put an ignorant person against me, then he would win. Because the ignorant one is not ready to listen to you. The ignorant person is not ready to change. He is stubborn, he is ignorant and he believes, he thinks that his ways are the right ways. In fact, Ulama have said one of the, the one of the great tricks of shaitan is that he will make you believe that what you are doing is right. So in this delusion that you think, you feel, you believe that you are right what you are doing, but in reality you are wrong. But he will make you believe it that you are right. And in this you will live your life thinking you are right, but you are actually doing the wrong thing. Alhamdulillah, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, Dawood Islami International is providing these kind of platforms where we can gain access to knowledge easily and not just any knowledge but authentic knowledge inshallah authentic knowledge of deen that we can learn, we can understand from the proper Sunni ulama al-Kiram and we can get the motivation to practice on this here. This is one of the beauties of Dawud Islami. The knowledge is given and also motivation is given to practice. When you see other people practicing, then you too ultimately will want to start practicing. It's a similar thing when it comes to bad company and good company. Bad company, if you, are, if you are a good person found in bad company, the people will not call you good. They will say, you are one of those bad ones. 
And like this, if you're part of good company, where they're always talking about Allah always talking about the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, always talking about the Qabr, about Mawt, about the Hereafter, the Akhirah, automatically, the longer you stay there, your mind becomes conditioned to these things. And this is reality, that one day we're going to die, and we take nothing but the deeds. So please do associate yourself with Dawud Islami wherever there's a markaz, even online via our website dawudislami.net. You can download the books for free or read online. Do join us inshallah for our next episode on this silsila, the path of knowledge. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alihi wa sallam. The path of knowledge is the way to Jannah, the path of